Hello from editing me. Just wanted to say that this video will be divided into four parts. First one being composition, second one being angle and leading lines, third one being color, and fourth one being story and the vibe of your photo. So if you're ready to take some bomb ass photos, let's get started. She's a Mona Lisa. This is one of the most important things that you have in photography and this is what everybody always tells to beginner photographers is to focus on the composition and there is this grid that you can put on your phone or on your camera. You can find the settings on your iPhone when you go to settings and camera and then you put on, well I have this in Spanish so it says parilla, but um, I think in English it's just grid. So you just press the button and it goes on and the grid is there, boom. And you place your subject or whatever is interesting in the photo you're about to capture in one of the four corners of that grid and it will automatically pump up your photo game. I don't know where this works, but it works. Here are a few examples. So the grid also helps you divide to kind of choose where you want to place your subject. So for instance, in this photo, the subject is on the lower third of the grid with the both the sun and the two towers being on the lower part of the grid. I could also place the subject in one of the corners as I said as for instance is in this picture scene right over here where my friend is climbing out of the tree and she is on the down right corner of the image and it just makes it more interesting versus if she would have been right in the middle because now it's not just her like if you're taking a portrait then it's easy to have the subject right in the middle and it looks good but if you're not taking a portrait something that's a bit more far away it's better if you place the subject in one of the four corners as set um you already saw one of the sunsets and here is another one once again the sun is placed in one of the four corners and not in the middle one of the biggest mistakes people make is just take a picture of a sunset where the sun is in the middle that's also very beautiful but there's not much happening it's very generic everybody takes pictures like that so if you want like to amp up your sunset game try to place the sun anywhere else but in the bright center of your picture as seen in this photo here there is more going on the sun is in one of the squares there's the bows but then there's also the tree leaves that frame the picture next in composition you have to think of how close or how far you are from the subject here is a great example with a turtle i have taken two different pictures one which is very close to the turtle and one which is further away the one which is close really emphasizes the details and how vulnerable the turtle looks but it doesn't really have much content to it more than that. Whereas the picture which is taking f more far away, you see the bigger picture. You see the bigger picture. There's a story behind it. The turtle is going towards the sea. You can see that it's being born. It's not dead because in the first picture it has its eyes closed so it could be dead. But it's alive and it was going towards the sea. And there's a bigger picture. And the first one, the one that's a close up, there is more contrast and like it's more dramatic and stuff but the second one has more of a storyline distance is key when you're thinking about what you're transmitting through your photo another good example of distance this is not a good photo at all sorry to mom or dad who took this photo they after this they took a lot better photos as well i just wanted to use this as a, like a bad example um there's a lot of negative space down at the down third of the photo there's no use of seeing the floor. I would rather see the sky and have there like the negative space because then it would pull the attention away from these people over here um, and put the attention on me as well. If I would lift the photo so that it would start first at my feet right over here. I mean, you can do this also later on in editing, so it's not kind of an issue there, but you can see now that I'm editing this to put it closer, the kind of ratio is automatically already much better than in the first photo. I mean, I don't, I just kind of go with a vibe and like this feels more aesthetic than the original one seen over here. And you can just kind of see how much kind of, yeah, there's no, why do you want to see the floor? Nobody wants to see the floor. There's nothing interesting to see in the floor, but there is something more interesting to see like in the sky, like the sky would balance out kind of the whiteness in the picture down here. Another example, not just with animals or humans, but this also works with landscapes whether you're closer or further away from the subject. 
So here is two different photos, one which is taken higher up and the one other one is lower down. So this would probably be better in the ankle section, but I'm gonna keep it in here. Both of these pictures are good. I have nothing to criticize about that. But the first picture seen here makes it seem more of a postcard. It's not just the city. You can also see the sky and the sea and it makes it more of scenic landscape. Whereas the second one is completely focused on the houses and you can see more of the details of the houses and how colorful they are and how nice everything looks. And it's from a bit higher perspective. So you're looking like from upwards down and not downwards up. And that also gives a different vibe. Windows are also a good way and an easy way to start when composing your picture and framing your picture. As in this photo, for instance, the window is not the main thing in this picture, but it helps frame the picture around it. The subject is placed in one of the corners and not in the center of the photo. If I were to be in the center of the photo, the photo would be much less interesting. Now that I'm on the side, you can also see outside and you can see raining, how it's raining, and it just kind of captures the stillness of a moment. In this picture right here, yeah, one thing you can also try to do is not crop like people's feet out or arms out. It just makes it look awkward. Uh, I have a great example of this somewhere that I might pull out in a moment. All right, here's an importance of keeping your feet in the picture. This makes it look so weird when I don't have feet over here, even though this picture is otherwise nice. Here are my feet. This is much better. It looks so much more natural when I have my feet present, whereas here I don't. And it's like, where, where are my feet? Does she have feet? Yes, she does. Why aren't they showing? second tip I'll talk about are angles and leading lines and these are a part of a composition but I'm gonna keep them separate because I'm just gonna focus on those two and especially leading lines these are two key factors that will help you get started in photography and just help you kind of guide your composition once again these are things that have helped me a lot and what I focus on a lot so here is a prime example of what is a leading line this, this, if not, nothing else, is a very, very... If you don't get the meaning by leading lines with anything else, you will get it by this picture because this has a concrete line and it's leading the eye. And same with the Brooklyn Bridge, like the size, it's just... This is the idea with leading lines. And usually it's not this obvious, but here it is and now you get the idea. Leading lines. There's not much going on in this picture, but I still like it. It's kind of cool. It's like the because you're kind of you feel like submerged in the photo here again leading lines this pathway which is leading towards the subject leading lines with the metro what are these seats towards the subject which is sitting in the corner same as here it just kind of leads the eye towards the corner where the subject is with a nice pants that are contrasting color once again and the outside has contrasting color i like this photo all right, here, leading lines on the alley towards the end over here. Makes it look all nice, that kind of draws also the eye towards the subject. I would maybe have kind of taken a step towards the right and put the subject so that you don't see the door over here. It would have led the eye even more towards the subject. But it also looks nice because she's looking upwards towards kind of the balconies and like not at the camera, but past the camera. So it's kind of like, oh, what's on her mind? Where's she going? Um, and once again, she is placed in the corner right here and it pulls the attention. Right, so what is there? Righty roo. Okay, here is uh, angles, the importance of angles. This versus this. Well, this is taking on my phone, so as you can see, you don't necessarily have to have a professional camera to take professional photos. This is taken with an iPhone and it has a portrait mode, so it kind of blurs the background bad background it doesn't pull the attention towards the model over here this one does so angles people angles this one i was almost on the ground with the camera pointing upwards and it elongates my friend's legs and also i really like this picture it's bomb af also because the model is bomb af <laughs> hard eyes this also has kind of leading lines because of the chair's position just leading towards 
the subject and this is one where I'm breaking the rule of not placing the subject in the middle. This is also crooked, let me straighten this. The fact that she's facing the camera makes her seem very confident, she's not looking away. Don't shy away from looking at the camera, even though I, I know I usually hate looking into the camera, but it makes you look so much more confident in pictures. Tip number three, focus on the colors in your picture. You can either pick out a color scheme beforehand if you're going taking photos or then just improvise in the moment. I usually either stick to neutral tones and choose like similar tones. So for instance, if my model is wearing something with blue, I will choose cool a cool tone background to suit the image. Or then I use contrast colors. If, if you don't know what an opposite color is, here's the color wheel. You pick a color and you look what the color is on the opposite side and there you have your opposite color. So for instance, the opposite color of yellow is purple, the opposite color of green is red. Here are a few photos to prove that red is a very vibrant color and pops out against many backgrounds. So if you really want your model to stick out from the background, you can have him or her wear red. Two of these are nature photos or plant photos, but the idea is that you see how much the color pops out from the cool background. I've also noticed the red color pop out from a warm background, as in this photo, because red is just such a bright color that it honestly just stands out from everywhere. Here, um, the subject is placed in one of these corners. And this is a prime example of matching colors. The model's shorts, which are white, are matching with the floral bush, and this makes a very aesthetically pleasing photo. You can either match all your colors to go together, which I like to do in my layout pictures, where I take pictures of my bullet journal, which you can see here. So here, like the color scheme is obviously green, which all just kind of blends in seamlessly, very aesthetic, very pleasing to the eye. Um, same thing with this, all the color team is like the same because it's like nature's own. Another example of leading lines, the doors that are open are leading the eye towards the subject. This is also a great example of color contrast. Contrasting color with the green pants and the red leaves versus kind of matching colors with the green pants and the orange leaves. Um, and here's an example of breaking the rule where the flowers are orange, which is a contrast color to blue, where his more is of bluish gray, which just kind of really pulls the attention towards the flowers and towards the bird over here, and just kind of balances it out. I mean, it would be kind of boring if it would just be all like, all gray, if there would be no flowers, then it wouldn't kind of pull the attention as much as with the flowers. Um, same here, once again, a carpe diem shot. This is one of my favorite shots ever. This was, I looked at like this, I think it was a monastery or something, church. And I was like, oh wow, this is a really nice composition. Like it's a, the, it's a very like, symmetrical with the trees and all the, the windows and stuff. It looks very nice. And then this random, <laughs> random kid just decided to run up the alley with this trolley. And he happened to have this great like red cap, which matched with the trolley and was a great contrasting color to the yellow or like kind of pulled away from it. It wasn't like... Yeah, different colors and I just I waited until he was in like the perfect like place and I took the photo and I still love it to this day. Here you can see once again with using the crop filter that all the attention is sort of in this part over here of the photo and especially like in the lower third. He's not in one of the corners but it works because there's also negative space down here. Here, once again, red is a nice color. I like the color red. A fourth tip is to think about the message and the vibe that your picture has. Yeah, what's the message you're telling? This is something that I've kind of already talked about in here. You wanna kind of wake the curiosity of the person who's watching. How far away are you from the subject? How close are you to the subject? What's the message here? I am using a very wide aperture to put the focus on the ants in the front. I'm kind of submerging myself into their world. For instance, this photo is a good example of waking the curiosity of the watcher. This is a more funny picture compared to the last one. I might have cropped this, this differently if I would take it again because the stairs are going through my friend's head, but otherwise, 
It's a nice photo. But this also tells a story because it's funny. They're really dressed up in fancy outfits and their hairs are all curled and then they're eating McDonald's. I, I love this photo. If you want the bokeh effect, which people talk about, just use a very wide aperture. It blurs the background. This, I think, has like a 4.5 or something because this lens is a very kind of, it goes very far. But the lenses I use nowadays, 50 millimeter, it makes the black around like very blurry and then the subject is closer here, makes it look very nice. I don't like the pole going through her head, try to avoid stuff like that, just... If I would have waited two seconds more, the carousel would have turned a bit more in, and I would have not gotten that through her head, but still, small details. Although this kind of also, I think, is telling a story that's like, ooh, why is she there? Because I placed her there, but you don't know that. She could be, is she waiting for someone? Is this Italy in 1980 or is this Italy in 2019? No, it's neither because it's Crete in 2019, but you did not know that. And she seems kind of like, what's going on? Is, is my husband at sea? <laughs> I don't know, but it's a nice photo. It has a nice kind of yeah, vibe to it. All right, to sum this all up, one, your composition, how close or far are you from the subject? And remember to use the grid and place your subject in one of the four corners. Two, angle the leading lines. Don't be afraid to try different perspectives. Three, color, do you use neutral tones or opposite colors? And four, what's the story or vibe that your picture has? Would you want to transmit to the viewer? Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment, you know, all that. Subscribe if you want to see more of this face. Hi. Um, yeah. Just go out Photo. shooting, send me, send me your pictures if you want to on Instagram or something. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!